cooling off period is needed in the Deep South, according to Attorney General Robert Francis Kennedy. His statement followed an announcement from the Freedom Riding Headquarters that more bus-borne crusaders of the type that met violence in Montgomery, Alabama, would start moving almost daily through that region. It would be wise, cautioned the Attorney General, for those traveling through these states to delay their trips until the present state of confusion and danger is past. The Freedom Ride story, I think, is one of the untold stories of the movement. So it was dramatic, it was a lot of drama. As a participant in the sit-ins of 1959 and 1960, I received a invitation from CORE to Congress of Racial Equality to participate in the Freedom Rides in 1961. On my bus, I was seated beside a young white gentleman who was part of the Freedom Ride. We arrived in a little city called Rock Hill, South Carolina, about 30, 35 miles from Charlotte. We got off the bus and we started into a so-called white waiting room. We were beaten by members of the Klan. They beat us. They left us lying in a pool of blood. The local police officials came up, wanted to know whether we wanted to press charges. We said, no, we come with peace. We believe in the way of love. More than 400 people were arrested by the end of the Freedom Ride in Jackson, Mississippi. Almost an entire school year before we participated in the sit-ins, we studied the way of peace, the way of love, the way of nonviolence. We became a disciplined group, and many of us grew to accept the way of nonviolence as a way of life, as a way of living. We had role playing, we had social drama. We had people pretending that they were spitting on someone, blowing smoke in the faces of would-be protesters, calling people all type of names, pulling people off of stools. So the, the core group of the Freedom Rides were ready. I tell young people all the time to study the lessons of the 60s. Watch the videos, listen to the music. I think young protesters and protesters not so young can learn so much. When I saw this young black woman being pushed at the Trump rally, it made me sad. It's painful, because it seemed like it's a, a replay of what we witnessed during the 60s. And that is my greatest fear about what is happening in America today. No justice! No peace! I think in America today, there's a tremendous amount of fear. People fear the future. America is changing. In the matter of a few short years, this country will no longer be majority white. People should be prepared to embrace the changes. And they're gonna come faster than we can. President Johnson calls for all Americans to back what he calls a turning point in history. This Civil Rights Act is a challenge to all of us to go to work in our communities and our states, in our homes and in our hearts, to eliminate the last vestiges of injustice in our beloved country. Well, I think it's important for us to teach this generation the distance we've come, the progress we've made, but if we're not watchful or mindful, we can slip back into another dark period.